you ever wondered, how did the moon form and evolve? Today, let's make a moon cheesecake to celebrate World Baking Day and learn about the geological history of the moon. It's difficult to answer how exactly the moon formed, but thanks to lunar meteorites and return samples, scientists have gathered some hints. There are some theories to explain the formation of the moon, and currently, the most popular explanation is the giant impact theory. It says that, in the early age of our solar system, there were lots of clueless planetary bodies traveling around, and on one fateful day, around 4.5 billion years ago, something as big as Mars crashed into Earth, who was still a baby at the time. This collision created a lot of mess, but because of Earth gravity, they didn't all drift away into space. Instead, they started orbiting around Earth. Eventually, they came together, forming our moon, and this process is called accretion. But at that stage, the moon was still a huge ball of molten rock, which geologists refer to as magma. And over time, things started to cool down, and a solid core, mostly made of iron alloy, was formed. And after that, more minerals started to crystallize and sink to the bottom, forming a layer which we call the mantle. Because of the high temperature and pressure, the materials at this layer are actually not in the solid state, still molten. These minerals, mostly olivine and pyroxene, are heavier and darker in color. The remaining materials, mostly made of plateau clay feldspar, floated to the surface, cooled down last, and solidified over time, forming the crust of the moon. This layer is the light-colored part of the moon's surface that we see today. This is called the Lunar Magma Ocean Theory, and it is the leading explanation of the moon's early evolution. And we also have a nicely layered cheesecake ready. But where did the dark spots come from? Well, space traffic didn't get much better since the giant impact. There were still many collisions happening every single day. And let's do an experiment to explain this. Luckily for us on Earth, we have an atmosphere that slows down these intruders and turns them into shooting stars or meteors. Most of them, if small enough, will be completely burned during this process. Although a small number of them will survive and make a hard landing and become meteorites. The moon, on the other hand, has no atmosphere and therefore nothing to slow down these impacting objects. Especially in the early time of our solar system, there were lots of violent collisions. Imagine this. A large object went straight towards the moon's surface without slowing down for even a bit. The collision fractured the crust, and the mantle materials underneath found its way to the surface, filling the basins at these crashing sites. Other than these larger impact events, there are countless smaller objects gliding onto the lunar surface as well, even to this day. And this process repeatedly broke down the very top layer of the crust, forming a dusty world that we see today. We call this loose, granular material as regolith. In the past, when people looked up at the moon and they saw these darker regions, they thought these are seas on the moon, which is why we call these regions as mare or maria in plural, the word for sea in Latin. The original crust, while being higher in elevation, are called terra or highland of the moon. These theories about the moon's formation and evolution are not perfect yet. There are still so many things we don't know about the moon, but with future missions such as Artemis, powered by the European Service Module, we will send astronauts back to the moon with advanced equipment to look for more answers. Did you know that there is a team at the European Space Agency that teaches astronauts to identify geological features so they can find the most interesting samples when they go to explore the moon? The Caves and Pangaea team also works with engineers and scientists to develop next-generation tools to support the scientific exploration on the moon.
That's one small bite for me, but hopefully soon, another giant leap for lunar geology. Happy moon baking!